All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast, BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. I'm a fan of a lot of true crime shows on YouTube, and one of them that I think is probably the absolute best is Brain Scratch on the Lord and Arts channel, hosted by John Lorden. And I normally don't like to make sort of response videos to someone else's channel, but he did an episode recently called The Carriega Family Murders and mentioned that not many people on YouTube are covering the case. So, like, I thought, you know, I mean, I have a very small channel, maybe the absolute smallest channel on YouTube, but, like, why not join in the discussion? And I'm hoping other small channels on YouTube and just other people will start discussing this case to try and achieve some sort of, you know, hopefully a conclusion and to actually solve the case, but also just to expand the discussion. And, you know, we have sort of a starting point now. The Carriega family murders, you know, took place in Seabeck, Washington, and the Crime Stoppers reward is actually being offered by the Crime Stoppers of Puget Sound, so to give some sort of geographic frame. This took place January 27, 2017, and we have um, a 911 call from an individual named Hunter Scapp who claims that his um, the house was broken into, people were shooting, and, you know, um, we saw the deaths of four people that night, Hunter Scapp. Jonathan Higgins, who were both 16 years old, Cristal Carriega, and then later we learned that Johnny Carriega was found dead in his truck, which had been set on fire. After the uh, people in the Carriega house were shot, then the house was set on fire as well. The dog survived because the dog was um, very, very pregnant, which I interpreted to mean that the dog wasn't very mobile and wasn't able to sort of, you know, run in and kind of, you know, act like an attack dog or anything. So... To focus on some of the actual kind of dense information in this one, and I do mean that this is a dense case. I've been going through the news articles about this one, a lot from uh, the Kitsap Sun. We have, you know, just um, Kitsap County has released several things. And also, there's this thing called COMO, K-O-M-O. That news agency has um, put out quite a few articles on the case, but it's all so general. All they basically say is there was a quadruple homicide and they're looking for information. We do have, though, a person of interest uh, named Danny Kelly Jr., but we'll talk about him in a second. A lot of people are just trying to figure out what on earth was going on with this. Well, some of the big points we can look at is they had multiple marijuana plants in the house. They had tens of thousands of dollars in the house, and um, some people were just sort of thinking that somehow that's connected. Well, what can we say about that? The money wasn't taken. The marijuana wasn't taken. This was not a burglary. This was not a heist. Just because of the fact that, you know, not only were people murdered, but all the bodies, you know, were torched. I mean, the house was torched, and Johnny's truck was torched. That gives us the impression that this was, you know, like an assassination. This was, these people were targeted for a very specific reason, most likely due to something associated with revenge. Now, what really does that mean? Who would have done that? Well, the largest person of interest in this case is a man named Danny Kelly Jr. And um, I was um, looking up the name Daniel Kelly because I thought they would have, um, I thought that maybe press agencies would have referred to him by that name. But no, his legal name is actually Danny, D-A-N-I-E, Danny Kelly Jr. And, you know, it's like he is apparently someone who, they don't give away all of the details, but they just sort of say that he is implicated because I believe this is going to come back to something associated with drug dealing. Like, he probably had some sort of drug connection to the Carriega family. But I don't necessarily want to focus in on that as the only possibility. I mean, this is a very brutal case and a very brutal homicide. Four people are dead. We have the 911 call from Hunter Scap, which indicates that, you know, there might not only be one person involved with this. And in one of the um, things that the sheriff's office released, they were talking about how uh, there have been multiple persons of interest, and they don't believe that th any of these people are really cooperating. I mean, like, th if I can understand his words, he's trying to say that there are many people that they are looking at, and there is very little cooperation from the people in this um, 
in this case. Like the people that they're looking at just aren't giving them the answers that they need, hence why it's, you know, still remaining unsolved. A theory that I've also developed is this could possibly be somewhat of a racially motivated crime. I really wonder if anyone has come at it from that way. And, you know, like the Cariegos in their day job, you know, like they were referred to as the owners of a Mexican restaurant in on, one, on the one hand. In other news reports, just refer, refer to them as running a taco stand that was beneath a um, another restaurant or coffee shop. And, like, one of the things that I haven't really heard anyone talk about is the possibility of whether or not this was just a hate crime or a racially motivated killing. I mean, four people were shot and then, you know, set on fire. This was not a burglary. I mean, we know that it wasn't a burglary because the the money and the drugs were still in the house. And I, by, the, by drugs, I mean, these were, I believe they actually had growing marijuana plants. I shouldn't really say drugs. I should just say the marijuana that was in the house wasn't really touched. It's not like they had, you know, some debt that they owed that someone was going after them for financial reasons. I mean, what it looks like this, from my very limited experience with true crime, is that this was definitely a sort of revenge killing. This was somebody trying to um, settle a score, but in a personal way. You know, like someone definitely was out for blood that night and like... The ambition was not to score any large amount of money. The ambition was not to score drugs. The ambition was just to destroy these people. It could have been related to a dispute over a previous um, drug deal. I mean, it could be related to something like that, but the ambition wasn't to get the money back. The ambition was to just, you know, leave four people dead and incinerated. And we know it wasn't a burglary, even an attempted thing like that because we also had the Cariega truck that was set on fire and you know Johnny Cariega was found dead inside it so it's just like this these people were targeted and you know like the police aren't releasing too many things associated with Danny Kelly Jr but um he is their top person of interest he has connections to a group called the Bandidos Motorcycle Group which um is a which claims to be by their own admission to be a violent motorcycle gang you know it, once again we got things like gang behavior, we got things like drugs, we got things like dealing, and you know, I'm really leaning toward the sort of largest um, sort of elephant in the room, if you will, that there could have been a dispute in the past over a large marijuana deal, and that could have led to the violence, and you know, and someone's not trying to get the money back, they're just trying to involve them in some sort of, it's just, you know, a revenge killing, murder, as a response, you know, just trying to, um, the workings of the illegal underworld, I suppose. Or the other possibility I mentioned, that this was a just a racially motivated crime. That's very possible. I mean, because the thing is, it's like none of the stuff was taken. The house wasn't, like, ransacked, and then they found that, you know, many things were missing. It's like... The people were shot and they were set on fire, but based on the 911 call from Hunter Scap, I really get the feeling that there are multiple people in the house. I mean, like, the 911 operator is asking him, how many people are in the house? And he says, I don't know. How many are people are shooting at you? I don't know. And I really got the impression from that that it's just there are multiple people in the house. Could they be associated with the Bandidos motorcycle group? It's very possible, but, you know... I just don't really know what to make of that. The surveillance footage of Danny Kelly walking into a Target has um, sort of the clothing that is uh, featuring the, de the designs and insignia of the Bandidos group. The Kitsap County Sheriff's Department is looking into it. But what we don't quite know is, what is the group's role in this? Like, even if Danny Kelly is involved with these murders, which, you know, I can't even say that he is innocent until proven guilty, right? Even if, does that necessarily mean that he was doing an action on behalf of the group, or was he just acting rogue? And, like, I really wish that there were more 
kind of like more clear things that were released in the media. I mean, all the sort. I mean, I read through so many articles of this case, and it's all just sort of saying the same thing. They're saying that um, there was a quadruple homicide, and the police are looking for information. That's just really all that we're getting. One of the news articles actually did ask, does anybody have any footage of, you know, certain roads in uh, Kitsap County where they want to know if, like, um, does anyone have any surveillance so, so we can sort of see, was it Danny Kelly's car going in a certain direction or the Cariega truck, was that going in a particular direction? Something really is standing out to me, though, about that, um, the possible implication of a racially motivated crime. I mean... By that, I mean, just to sort of give my most genuine theory, which I don't really hold back on, it's like, it's a combination of something associated with the marijuana dealing and with something racially motivated. I'm really sort of putting these two things together, and I think there are probably two large motivations for this crime. I mean, like, if someone has tens of thousands of dollars in their house, multiple marijuana plants, I mean, that can only lead you to believe one thing, more or less. Moreover, it's like, you know, just, I'm really just getting, you know, that strong vibe that there is some connection to what I guess you would call a hate crime. I don't know 100%. A lot of this is speculation. The news sources are very general. But it's possible that there was a very large marijuana deal going on that somehow, somehow there was some problem associated with that. Somehow that um, somebody, it could be Danny Kelly or it could be somebody else, it could be the Banditos, could be somebody else, we just don't know yet, had this very large feeling that um, they were being cheated by the Cariega family. So they responded out of vengeance. Not to get money, not to get the drugs, out of vengeance. I mean, I think it's a combination of something associated with marijuana and associated with racially motivated violence. But all I can do is really theorize right now because they really aren't releasing that many things to the public. And like, I mean, they're just sort of reprinting the same stories over and over again. And I think the police are really doing that for a reason because they're not giving away things because they feel like they're very close to solving the crime. And people have made some comments on my other uploads that when the police are close to solving a crime, they don't always, you know, give away that much. Like, I mean, they're really just trying to say, hey, if you're somehow firsthand, if you have a firsthand involvement with this case, please come forward. These are the numbers to do so. They are zoned in on numerous persons of interest. It's not just Danny Kelly. They have multiple people, but the people aren't cooperating. Well, what do you think? Um, do you think that this is anything other than a issue associated with large-scale marijuana dealing and racially motivated violence? If you have anything to contribute, please say something in the comments below, and let's expand the discussion. You know, all I can really say is those are the just like the two largest responses I would have to something like that. I'm not 100% convinced that um, it would be anything to the contrary. If you have any theories, anything to discuss, any new points, I would like to hear it. Because maybe there is something completely, you know, something that I've overlooked completely, something that I haven't, you know, obtained yet. And if you have some insight in this, I want to hear it. And we can just keep discussing this. This could become, you know, a larger conversation and maybe somehow in some way someone is going to connect the two dots that need to be connected and is just going to have that aha moment when everything makes sense to them all right and also um if you want you can hit the like button and subscribe but most importantly most importantly please drop some comments below so we can continue the discussion that's all for me now until next time